Good morning, everyone, and welcome to church this morning, whether you're in the building with us, whether you're worshipping on Zoom, or whether you'll be with us later in the week as you follow our service. You're all very welcome. We've got some visitors with us, I know, this morning. It would be lovely if they could join us for coffee in the, well, or tea, in the Wesley room after the service. Please bear with me while I have a few notices. Um, Gary and Jackie organised the Fair Trade Coffee Evening um, on Tuesday, and a huge thank you to them. Can it be more than 35 years ago when Pat and John Thomas took over this venture? Uh, it, it seems amazing. Thank you to all who helped and supported, uh, reminding us of the importance of fair trade products. Um, we did raise uh, £97. It was not meant as a fundraising, it was meant as a reminder and a social evening, and indeed it was. But we did raise £97, which will go towards the fair trade account, um, supporting our monthly stall. It's still in deficit, sadly, because during COVID, um, obviously, um, we didn't have any income, and so that money will go towards that. And there was a donation as well of £55 towards Transform Trade. Uh, a thank you to Rosemary and John, who organised the Macmillan Coffee Morning yesterday, and all who helped or supported in any way. Rosemary reminded me that it's over 30 years since she first started her coffee morning in her house as a very small venture um, in memory of her dad. Yesterday, we raised a fantastic £627, um, which goes to Macmillan, and I know there is more to come. There are lots more wonderful jigsaws Please do look at them. They're on a bargain price, if you know the price of jigsaws. And although these have been done once, um, they are all in pristine condition. And they are three pounds a jigsaw or two for five pounds. So, you know, it could be four jigsaws, ten pounds well spent for the winter evenings. Pauline has asked me to remind um, of the lunch today, if anyone hasn't signed up and would like to join the group, please let Paulie know, and she'd be happy to welcome you. <clears throat> Pat, I love it when people like Pat make mistakes, because I feel so much better. <laughs> um, Pat put a notice in about a really interesting um, uh, Zoom meeting, uh, talking about uh, loss of sight and the effect of that for people in church, um, but she omitted to say when. Um, it will be remedied next week, but the date actually for any of you who are interested is the 26th of September, and it's to be able to sign into Zoom at seven, and the, the um, meeting and information will be from 7.30. And then finally, uh, Louise has asked me to remind you that the film The Gathering is on this Tuesday. Thank you very much. And now, um, all of you who are able, please, if you would stand for the Bible. Thank you, Jackie. It's good to have our own minister, the Reverend Louise Goff, leading us this morning, but I think she's got lots of helpers, so we look forward to a really interesting service. Thank you, Thank Louise. You, well, you got my name right, but you implied that it's not normally interesting when it's just me. <laughs> so, if you... <laughs> that... Okay, Jan, thank you. I'll talk to you later. If, if you'd like to be seated. It is lovely to be with you this morning. And I am so happy to be sharing worship with members of the Young People's Fellowship, uh, the YPF. 
You might not have seen much of the YPF recently, but we have been meeting together fairly regularly over the year and catching up and planning this service, which is a little bit overdue. But life has been really exciting for Eli and Marisha and Ronya, and now a few more things are afoot as well. So this morning, we're going to hear about all of that and about how God has been at work in their lives and through them. And we'll also remember the important message we want to share, that God is with us. We hear the psalm that we'll read together shortly and words from the prophet Isaiah. And we'll also be encouraged to think about the global challenge and God's call to live our faith and get involved and work in the world. You will be amazed when you hear what Marisha and Eli and Ronya have been up to. So I'd like to say thank you for planning this service and taking part and choosing the Bible readings and the hymns. I did slip up. I've managed not to give you a paper copy of the words of the one that's on the screen and not in the book. So I apologise for that. But also thank you to Jackie and to John for all that you do and for all the wonderful times with the YPF over the years. I don't know whether it was edited out, but on the title screen of the um, service, it should have said the service with the Young People's Fellowship, Eli, Ronya and uh, Marisha and Reverend Louise Goff, who remembers what it was like to be that age. <laughs> anyway, we're going to begin. Oh, it is there. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to begin with a prayer, so let us pray. God, close beside us, in this busy, hurting, wonderful world, we draw aside to pay attention to your voice within, among and around us, to discern the movement of your spirit, to receive your tenderness and strength. Remind us that we were formed by your hands and that you know our days. Show us in our times of fear that darkness is as light to you. Assure us with your promise, I am with you. Do not be afraid for I am your God. Living one with us now, we worship you. Amen. We're going to sing hymn number 82, and all the words are on the screen. How great thou art.
Alicia is going to come and lead us through Psalm 139. And the words are on the screen for you to join in the words in the bold type, or they're in the book at number 835. Good morning, everyone. This is Psalm 139. O oh Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You mark out my journeys and my resting place and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but you, O Lord, know it altogether. You encompass me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go then from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, your right hand hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me and the light around me turn to night, even darkness is no darkness with you. The night is as clear as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I thank you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous I works, and my soul knows well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my form, and yet unfinished, already in your book, were all my members written. As day by day they were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How deep are your counsels to me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I count them, they are more in number than the sand, and at the end I am still in your presence. Search me out, O God, and know my heart, Try me and examine my thoughts. See if there is any way of wickedness in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. God of our resting and our journeying, God of our searching and our discovering, God of our longing and our contentment, ever calling us, ever loving us, ever with us, we worship you. You are the maker of our hearts. You fathom the mystery of our being. You are the keeper of our times. You share each thought and movement. You are the giver of every gift. You shape our struggles into blessings. Living God, for the life least to us this day, for your growing love within us, for the freedom to make mistakes and wideness of your forgiveness, for all your benedictions of grace, we praise and worship you now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is Isaiah chapter 41, verses 8 to 10. But you, Israel, my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, you descendants of Abraham, my friend, I took you from the ends of the earth, from its farthest corners I called you. I said, you are my servant. I have chosen you, and you 
you and have not rejected you. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Thanks be to God for his word. My reading is actually a poem. It's The Hill We Climb. Some of you may be familiar with it. This was the poem by a young lady called Amanda Gorman who wrote the poem and recited it at the inauguration of President Joe Biden on the 20th of January, 2021. At the time, she was 22 years old and the youngest poet to be chosen for this task. It was written by her partly in response to the Capitol riots that had occurred just a few weeks earlier. The poem would take too long to read in its entirety, so I have chosen excerpts from it. She speaks of her country, but we can just as easily see it as a message for the world. It brings a message of hope and the promise of young people who can carry this flame of hope into the future. The hill we climb. When day comes, we ask ourselves, where can we find light in this never ending shade? The loss we carry, a sea we must wade. We've braved the belly of the beast. We've learned that quiet isn't always peace. And the norms and no notions of what just is, isn't always justice. And yet the dawn is ours before we knew it. Scripture tells us to envision that everyone shall sit under their own vine and fig tree and no one shall make them afraid. If we're to live up to our own time then victory won't lie in the blade but in all the bridges we've made. We did not feel prepared to be the heir of terrifying hour. But within it, we found the power to author a new chapter, to offer hope and laughter to ourselves. We will not march back to what was, but move to what shall be. A country that is bruised, but whole, benevolent, but bold fierce and free we will not be turned around or interrupted by intimidation because we know our inaction and inertia will be the inheritance of the next generation our blunders become their burdens but one thing is certain if we merge mercy with might and might with right, then love becomes our legacy and change our children's birthright. When day comes, we step out of the shade, aflame and unafraid. The new dawn blooms as we free it, for there is always light. If only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. Good morning, everyone. Um, or as they see, say in Fiji, Yandra. <laughs> it's really good to be back home and I wanted to talk to you today about my time in Fiji because we all wanted to let you know what we've been up to in the last few months, and as lots of you know, I've been away for a while. 
Um, so, in February, I flew to New Zealand for two weeks, and then Australia for two weeks, and then I traveled just a little bit further to get to Fiji, which, there is a picture of this. Yep, that's it. So, uh, specifically, I was in a rural village called Silana, which you can see is the red star up there, in the Dawasamu district in Tai Levu. Um, I spent four months in Silana with an organization called GVI, which stands for Global Vision International. They have programs all over the world in animal conservation and community development. Um, and in Fiji, they have four programs set up. So that's the marine conservation, community development programs, education programs, and the global health program. So I am really interested in health and healthcare, so I participated in their global health internship. And the primary purpose there is to assist the district nurse wherever she needed help in non-medical practice. So this uh, help consisted of three main aspects. There's no picture, that's it, so <laughs> this is Solana. Um, one more picture, please. Thank you. So first was the house-to-house -house visits. So we visited all nine villages in the Dawasamu district and then some more villages in neighboring districts like Burawai. And that was to carry out surveys or to talk to villagers about preventative health. So what we would do is we would look at data from previous years and evaluate what issues arise at certain times in the year. So for example, infections are very common during the wet season because it's very hot and infections can't dry properly. Um, and so we spent lots of time during that season to talk to villagers about why this happens and how we can prevent it. Um, yeah, so in this picture, I'm actually surveying, sorry, it's the same picture, one picture, that's it. So in that picture, I'm actually surveying in one of the neighboring villages to ask about carver intake and health because the Suva National University in Fiji uh, asked us to help them with their research, which was really interesting for me. So the second aspect, that's the next picture, thank you, was creating and leading school workshops in the local primary school called Nabunisea District School. And they take children from the age of three to 13. So it's a bit different from our primary schools. We would spend Monday and Tuesday afternoon collecting resources, talking to teachers at their school and also teachers that we might know from home, teachers that were there volunteering. Um, to, to prepare for what was called health club on Wednesdays. We had lots of different themes, things like what bacteria is, why we wash our hands, uh, nutrition, exercise, and also things like emotional understanding and conflict resolution. And I loved getting to know all the kids. That was a really fun aspect. And then finally, there's not a picture for this one, uh, we did lots of data collection and input. So we collected data, like I said, for surveys and also input data for the district nurse on the general health of all the villages. Um, we also went to the nurse's station every week to help her with her mums and bobs workshop, which is where the mothers and the young children go for checkups so the children get weighed and measured and make sure that they're reaching all their milestones in their life. And then if they weren't reaching those milestones, they would be written down to have a house visit in the following week. And then all that data is fed back to the district nurse so that she can write her monthly and annual reports. So we worked Monday to Friday and then had the weekend off to travel the island or stay in the village and spend time with the host families. So we had lots of fun experiences while we were there. I've got lots of pictures here. <laughs> As you can see, it's all very blue, very green. Um, that Solana, it was a beautiful place, so it was really... Gorgeous. We went dolphin watching. You can see the dolphins in the bottom left. We saw them all the time. The basket weaving from uh, banana leaves. Um, we did swimming, hiking. And that top picture on the left is when we performed a traditional meke, which is kind of like a dance, but we were sitting down. We've got all the leaves around our uh, wrists and our waist. Um, and that was lots of fun. So the villagers sing and uh, play the lally and we do their dance um, and if there's any rugby fans in the room I also watched the Fijian Drua play three times that was really cool <laughs> they did win a few times um, and we also had one day off to prepare a traditional lobo which is a traditional meal where they wrap meat vegetables and like root plants in leaves and then cook them underground that was really fun 
So I was in Silana from mid-March to early July, which means that I was there for Easter and Mother's Day, as well as birthdays, a funeral, and lots of welcoming and leaving ceremonies. The village is Christian, and the majority are Methodist, and so there's a Methodist church right in the center of the village. Um, there's a picture of it, actually. Yeah, that's it. So it looks like that from the outside. This was Easter. You can see they've got the, it was uh, Palm Friday, they've got the palms in the door, um, which is really nice. And then on the inside is just the floor where everybody sits on mats um, and a pulpit at the front. Uh, it's very humble, and I really enjoyed going every Sunday, despite understanding very little of the services. They spoke in Fijian, but they did usually include a small excerpt in English. My favourite part was their singing, the Fijian sang for every occasion, and God is clearly very much alive in that part of the world. And I'm so grateful how welcomed I felt by every member of the community. So I have just one more picture, uh, which is my favourite one, because it's so colourful and bright, it's not edited, that's just really what it looks like. Um, it was so green and so beautiful, and my time there was equally beautiful, and I'm so thankful for your support and your well wishes. And like in Psalm 139, if I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, your right hand hold me fast. In a literal sense, I was very, very far away from home, but God held my hand and led me the entire time. Amen. Um, so somehow, our next hymn is one that I sang very often in Fiji, even though it was outside of church and usually with friends. But I think this is testament to him leading us wherever we shall be. Hymn number 247, Lord of the Dance. <laughs>
It's nice to be here. It's nice to see you all. Um, don't know how I'm going to talk Fiji, but I'll try. <laughs> uh, I want to talk to you about uh, the past two years, what I've been up to through my church role as a global youth representative for the UK. Uh, what it essentially means is I was representing the Methodist Church of the UK as a whole, specifically the youth of our churches in other parts of the world. And uh, I got to I got introduced to the role through 3Generate. It's an event that happens every year in Birmingham NEC Hall, if you know where that is. It's a massive hall. Uh, it happens every year for the youth of our churches. Everybody from the UK attends. And I think we end up having about two, 3,000 uh, people attending, and that's just youth, apart from the workers and everything. That's specifically just the youth. And it's, it's a great way to... Uh, gather and uh, it's for them to discover and explore their faith uh, but also to make friends and you know for churches that don't have a lot of youth for the kids to come and see how big really their church family is and there's many many different activities that go on to really explore uh, and encourage them to see how many different ways they can worship God it you know it's not just one way you can do it in any form you like in any form you enjoy so it's a really great way to encourage kids to be involved in church and see what their gift is and how they can use it in church. Um, so I, I have a little video about 3Generate that explains it a bit better and then I'll talk to you about how my role and what it led me to do. Regenerate is the National Methodist Youth Gathering um, of children and young people from churches all across the country and um, where everyone um, comes together to pray and um, to discuss important matters and sharing with the church what God is saying through them. Children and young people aged anywhere from 4 to 23 can come and they learn together, worship together, have fun together. And most of all, it's about children and young people being able to tune in to um, God and the world around them and thinking about what God is saying to them, what God is putting on their hearts, and finally responding to that. So thinking, what's next? Where is God calling me? And we really want children and young people to realize that whoever they are, wherever they come from, wherever they're at in their faith journey, God has something for them and has somewhere to take them and wants to use the gifts and skills that they've been blessed with. The thing that I am always so blown away by at 3Gen is uh, the sense of belonging here for so many young people, all from different backgrounds, different experiences, different interests, and there is so much here for all of those young people and children to engage in, uh, which is really important, but also the opportunity to talk about some real issues of faith. I think it's really important for the church to have these kinds of events um, in order to help young people to see that there are so many other young people across the connection. When you come to such a big event like this, there are just so many people. So you always get to have a really good conversation where someone understands. And I think that sense of someone understanding is so important for mental health. Even if you come by yourself, you always have like someone to hang out with. It just goes to show how much of a family we are, I guess. Every human being interacts uh, with God or with, with, with just life in different ways and it's so important that we cater to that. You can't just have one way to connect with God, there's loads of ways to. Free Gen has been absolutely amazing. Um, they can explore things that they could never come across in their everyday lives. Having so many different choices that they don't have to stick to only one area but they can go and share their passions with each other. The true self is coming out in Free Gen. My group of young people, they all like different things. It's a really great opportunity for those who like doing things more quietly, those who like things art and craft, those who like to sing and dance. There's just, there is honestly something for everyone. I think I've tuned in to God through meeting other people and seeing how they've tuned in as well, and hearing sort of God's stories through other people and how he's worked in other people's lives. You know, a lot of young people have creative ideas, ideas which would work great for the church. So Methodist Church really needs to uh, take the feedback from the young people and see what they want in their churches. 
Yeah, I think Three Gen is a great place for that to happen because there's so many events going on where young people can share their thoughts, write down their opinions, and they actually get read and they get heard. And then that feedback is implemented into their churches. You know, we had a great spectrum exercise in the town square where we had asked young people to write down their like feelings on different issues. And it was just so great to see people of all ages and all opinions putting forward what they thought about the issue and, and respecting each other's opinions. I think that's absolutely wonderful to see. So it's been a really good opportunity to speak about issues that you feel very strongly about and there are lots of people here who have the same views and different views, so you can, they can challenge your point as well. Knowing the reps that go to conference and the way that the young people can come up and talk to us and interact with us, I think that that shows that their views are gonna be heard. Actually, to be here as a volunteer is just as encouraging as to come as a young person, uh, to see all the excitement in the Methodist Church, that there are young people around the place, and, uh, and actually they do want to talk faith, they do want to talk spirituality, they do want to talk about God, but to be in this space where we're, where we're engaging these conversations with our young people actually really feeds us as, as volunteers. Uh, because free generate means so much to so many people. Uh, it could be that they are from a church and where they're the only young person. Um, and by coming to Fijanet, they can see that the Methodist youth is larger than they thought. Uh, it could be um, the sense of empowerment that they get from Fijanet, um, but it could also be the different worship styles we use uh, to try and engage with children people and to show that church doesn't always have to be one way. I think three gen is important because it allows young people to express themselves in a way they don't always get to at their own churches and it allows them to explore different viewpoints for people their age and allows them to build like meaningful relationships as well. The whole thing is amazing. The village is amazing. The activities are amazing. The worship is really good. It's inspiring. It's a great bonding experience. It's just, it's just excellent. So when I come here seeing this whole place full of youth that is excited and eager to learn about God, it makes me happy, especially coming here as a youth rep and being able to help them speak their opinion and be heard. It's, it's just another feeling. I really hope that children and young people come away from 3 generate with a feeling of belonging and knowing that they are part of the Methodist Church and knowing that they are part of this amazing family. It feels, it feels like I'm getting to like, know these people but in Christ. So it's more like I have a community. So that's, I think, explains it better than I could about what 3 Generate is and how important it is actually to our youth and how important it can be for them to discover who they are and what they like, but also have a sense of belonging in the church. Because uh, like they talk about in the video, sometimes in churches, uh, the youth are not always heard, but their opinion does matter. And sometimes they have really good ideas. So to be in a place where there is so much diversity from all over the UK, but also a sense of belonging in terms of we are so similar, we are the same, we worship the same God, and we have the same issues, different issues, but at the end of the day, being together with a family that understands you is so important for the youth. So that's a bit about what 3Generate is and how it can be so helpful for our youth. Um, and through Generate then comes uh, rep roles. Uh, so there's the youth rep, so youth president, uh, that is elected at 3Generate. They, the youth president is kind of uh, the leader that kind of uh, plans 3Generate, leads it, and also represents the youth and uh, you know works with them, works for them. And then the youth president has youth representatives that kind of help the youth president in what they want to do, what they want to achieve in the year. I was one of them. Uh, my role was the global youth representative. So. There are many, there was a council rep that goes to the council to represent the youth and share opinions that are taken from 3Generate and they uh, talk about those issues in the council that look, this is what our youth wants in church and they try then to implement it in each churches and try to listen to their voices. Uh, there's ecumenical, there's agents of change, uh, mine was the global rep, uh, so I represented the Methodist church in other parts of the world and through that I got to go on many amazing adventures 
which I'm excited to share with you. So the first one was I got invited to uh, Tizé in France, which is a little village in France, and the Brothers of Tizé, which are, they are Catholic, essentially, and they wanted to hold an event in Rome, uh, which was called Together. And what they were trying to do was uh, break this uh, bridge and this uh, divide that we have between denominations that, um, you know, just because you're from a different denomination, we can't really worship God together. But the, the whole point of it was that we are one body in Christ. So the Catholic Church wanted to hold this event to try to separate that and bring people together and make them realize that just, you know, we're not so different from each other and we can still worship together. So the planning of it was in Tizé, and I went there to, as a global youth rep again, uh, representing UK, the Methodist Church, and we got to planning the event in, uh, for Rome. Uh, it was an amazing experience. I got to have dinner with the brothers of the Tizé community, and the churches were like uh, these really old, beautiful little churches, and the service was so, just really simple, but so beautiful as well. Uh, and then through that, then I got to go and actually host uh, the event, the prayer and worship uh, event in Rome before the Pope's sermon. So I have some photos from Rome um, about from my event. So that's the St. John's Basilica. I got told that that essentially was the Vatican City before the Vatican City. So it's the church where they make the Pope the Pope, they crowned the Pope as the Pope. So it was such an amazing experience to just even think about that. I was standing in the position where the Pope could have stood and became the Pope. Um, and you know, it, it was beautiful inside. I have another photo from the inside just to show you how huge it really is from the inside. It's massive, just to give you an idea of how many people it can fit. And then if we go to the next photo, that's how many people that were there. About I think we planned for about a minimum of 5,000, 3,000 people, and I think there were about five, 6,000 people there. And we still had more space for people to come. Um, and if you go to the next photo, that's me on the stage uh, hosting. And uh, the people on the left side of me, if you can see, uh, that was our worship uh, band, I guess you can say. Every single one of them, there were seven of them, and every single one of them was from a different country. And all of them came together to worship God. And it was such an amazing event. Uh, the whole point of it was to have our worship here before we walked down to St. Peter's Square to hear the sermon. So it was, uh, I, I can say honestly, it was one of the best experiences of my life. And I'm so glad that I got told this after the event and not before. But I got told that I am probably the first and the last person to do something like this in a Roman Catholic church. Uh, so that was like, you know, an amazing experience. Um, and if you go to the next photo. Through that, then I got uh, invited to Sweden this year to the World Methodist Council. I, the connections I made through Rome led me to go into Sweden this year. I got invited as the Global Youth Rep again to represent the youth and the UK in Sweden for the World Methodist Council. Uh, going into it, I didn't really know what to expect. When you hear, you know, it's just a council, I thought, okay, There'll be about a maximum of 1,000 people, maybe. There'll be a little group of youth, and that'll be about that. But there were over 80 nations there. I don't know how many people, but there were about 10, 20 people from each group, from each country, and there were 80 nations present. I think I have a photo. Uh, that is the, sorry, if you could go back. That is the Gothia Tower. So that's where our conference was, uh, was held and it's connected by one hotel lobby, which apparently is the longest hotel lobby in the world. And we had to walk through end to end many times. It was very tiring. Uh, but that's where the conference was held. That's the main hotel in Gothenburg in Sweden. And if you go to the next uh, photo, so that is each person from each nation representing their church. We have the UK in the middle as well. But that kind of gives you an idea of how many nations there were. There were still a lot of nations that weren't able to attend. For example, a lot of nations from Africa that were denied visa, even though you know, their visa was to attend something to do with the church. But for that reason, their visa was denied, and a lot of them could not attend. But we still had a lot of people, a lot of nations to represent their churches. And again, it was, it was just amazing to see 
in my mind, what I had, a small church family, it was so surreal to see how big our family really is and how many people there are worshipping God around the world. Uh, so if you go to the next photo, that is, I got the honour to meet the, on the right you have the new president of the World Methodist Council, and on the left you have the vice president, which is from the UK, so that's good. Uh, that is the vice president of the UK. So uh, I attended, I also got attended as the delegate of the World Methodist Council, which essentially means I'm, mem I'm a member of the council now for the next five years, along with them being the uh, president and vice president for the next five years for the council, which is an amazing you know, opportunity to have. Um, and if you go to the next photo, that is just some of the youth that was there from around the world. Every person, I don't think there's even one person from the same country. Every each and one of them is from a different country attending uh, the World Methodist Council and representing their church. So, it, you know, it, again, it just makes you think how big re our family really is. And there is a lot more youth than we think there is as well, which is why it's so important to hear their opinion and see what they have to say, because there are a lot of people with really good ideas, which, you know, when I got to sit with all of them and talk about how we want to lead church and where we want our church to go, um, it, it makes you think, wow, these ideas, they, they can really help our church. Um, so moving on, uh, that is a certificate that I got. Uh, I don't know if you can read it, but essentially it says that I am a part of the World Methodist Council for the years 2024 to 2030. Uh, and it's a great honor. And this was essentially, it was meant to be the last thing I did as uh, my global youth rest representative role. I went there, you know, telling people, oh, I, I'm kind of done after this, this is my last thing. But uh, through attending the council meetings, and then uh, I got to join the Committee for the Young and Youth Adults, uh, Youth and Young Adults, sorry. Um, and through that, I somehow got elected as the General Secretary of Communications for the Youth and Young Adults Committee, which essentially means uh, I am kind of in charge of bringing the youth together for the next five years. And, you know, if there are any events, uh, essentially, uh, maybe I could be a part of that, uh, which again is, is a, you know, it's amazing for me to be a part of. And it's with the support of you. I, I almost didn't do this role because uh, I thought, you know, maybe it's not something for me. But uh, Leslie encouraged me a lot. My parents encouraged me a lot. So, and these two years have been amazing. I, I wouldn't have got to do any of this or travel uh, if it wasn't for the support of everyone and through this role. Um, and yeah, I think me and another person, John Delaney from Barbados, we are the youngest people in history to be elected for something in the council. So it is an, it, it's just, I'm humbled by the experience, and I just want to say thank you to all of you again for the support that you've always given. Um, I don't think I have any more photos. Do I have any more photos? Or is that the last one? That's the last one, yeah. Um, I just want to say thank you to you again. And uh, it's, it's really to encourage if you do know any youth, if you know any kids that would like to be involved in the church, Three generate again. It just comes back to three generate. That's where the roles are given out. That's where people are encouraged to uh, apply for the roles, see what they like, see what they want to do, how they want to be a part of the church. And um, it's just to say, you know, through a little role at three generate or as a representative, you may think because it's voluntary, it, it might not lead to anything, or you know, it's nothing. It's just a small role. It won't amount to anything, but. Uh, like you've seen, you know, I, I thought the same, but through the role I've gotten to do so many amazing things. So if you do know any youth, uh, I'd highly recommend you encourage them to attend 3Generate if they can. And through 3Generate then they can make friends, which is an important thing, learn more about God, which is the most important thing, but also learn more about the roles and see how they want to be involved. So thank you for your time. Well done. Thank you. We're going to sing one of the songs that I think was sung at Three Generate and is sung at Three Generate and it's all on the screen.
Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sin like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. Apology, Jan. You're absolutely right. They're far more interesting, aren't they? <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing for sharing all the things that you have been doing. Oh well, that's only some of the things you have been doing. I don't know about you, but my mind feels like it's all yeah. It's amazing. Thank you so much. I am. Um, I know that for some of you, things are going to change in the next couple of weeks. So I'm just going to invite you just to come up and say a few words about where next for your journey. Can I come first, Marisha? Brilliant. Hi, everyone. 
Um, I'm Marisha, as many of you know, and I'm 18, I'm almost 19 next month. And um, yeah, um, I'm going to be starting university next week, which is very exciting. I'm going to the University of Leicester and I'm going to be studying law there. So yeah, I hope to become a lawyer in the future. And um, yeah, I just need all of your prayers to get me through the next two years. And if you know any lawyers, let me know. <laughs> so, so yeah, that's pretty much it for me. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hello again. Yeah, I am also starting university next week. I think the same time as Marisha actually, because obviously I did one year out of school after finishing A-levels. I'm going to King's College London to study medicine because I would like to become a doctor. Um, and I'm very excited. And I just have one more thing to say as well, I would like to mention. When I was in Korea after Fiji, I stayed with um, Pastor Kim Kyung, who used to live in Swansea. He lived in Swansea for, I think, six or seven years. Um, and they have a church there, it's not very big, maybe same, well, maybe same size as ours, and they would like to open a library for their youth. Um, so they're looking for books, children's books for primary school age, maybe a little bit older, but mainly primary school would be ideal. So if any of you have old books from grandchildren, children, anything, please could you be so kind as to bring them in and my mum will take care of them as I will no longer be here. Um, <laughs> but that's all. Uh, thank you so much for all your help and that's everything. Uh, hello again. So uh, outside of my uh, rep role for the church, uh, I graduated from university last year, last summer. I'd done motorsports engineering in Trinity St. David's. And I graduated last uh, year, and now I work full-time for Audi on Fabian Way. Uh, it's been a great experience. Uh, I'm enjoying it so far. Um, and, yeah, that's, uh, you know, again, I just appreciate your support, because for a lot of, uh, a lot of you have seen me grow up from a little 10-year-old child. So I do appreciate your support and help, and, yeah, uh, thank God for blessing us in so many ways. I mean, I, I can say for all of us, we all appreciate your help and support. So thank you. Well I think there was a line in the poem to say, looking for the light, which is always there. And I think you've shared a lot of light with us this morning and you have been the light. And I pray that you will continue to be the light and that we all will. So thank you so much for inspiring us this morning. And we will pray for you in your various ventures. But first of all, we're going to sing a hymn. We're going to sing um, number 76, Give Me Joy in My Heart. <laughs>
going to say our prayers. So let us pray. Living God, we give thanks for all that we have seen and heard this morning, for evidence of your work in the world, alive in the light of these and so many more young people and children. God, we ask your blessing, especially today, on Ronya and Marisha and Eli. We give thanks for them and pray that you will continue to bless them and inspire them in their lives. We pray for Ronya and Marisha as they go off to university and we pray for Eli in his work and in his role in the Methodist Church. We pray for all young people, especially those going to university and those who are still uncertain about their futures. We pray for children and young people who struggle with their mental health and those from backgrounds which are unstable. God, we pray for the projects that Ronya worked with, for all those still in Fiji, for the children and families that she met. And we pray for Three Generate, for the URC Youth Organisation, for its Executive and Youth Assembly, and we pray for B. Hume, the Methodist Youth President this year, and all young people involved in the Methodist Church and URC. God, we pray that we might recognise your presence in the world and see your light all around us, especially in the darkness. And we pray that as a church, you'll help us to listen to your young voice and to continue to serve your world. Living God, we pray today for all those who are going through difficult times. We think of our members in hospital or in nursing homes. We think of all who face struggle, for those who are suffering loss and those who are grieving. We pray for all who are facing difficulties and difficult situations, for those who are anxious, for those who are vulnerable, And we pray for our world in all its need. And we thank you that your love and light shine in every situation. And so we join all our prayers together in the prayer that Jesus taught. And we say it in whichever form or language we're most at home with. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And I forgot to pray for young people changing schools as well. So we hope that that will go very well. We're going to make our offering for the work of the church. Loving God, we offer you these gifts. We offer you all that we give. We offer you our lives in your service. 
May your love be known. Amen. Well, we've heard such a lot about the diversity and the global nature of our church and the fact that we're part of something huge and wonderful. And we'd love to share that with everyone and be a place where everyone can feel at home. And that's really why we're showing the film, The Fruits of the Spirit, on Tuesday. And I hope that you'll all come along to see that and hear how we as a church can be an even more welcoming place and be sensitive to those who perhaps come with hurts and vulnerabilities. So please come at seven o'clock on Tuesday. I'd be so glad to see you there and we can continue to explore together what it means to be part of a church which offers God's care for everyone. We're going to sing our last hymn. We've been thinking about how God is with us we're going to sing the Lord's My Shepherd, I'll Trust in You Alone. So the blessings of God, the Creator, Son and Spirit be with us all this moment and always. Amen. <laughs>